Hello. Normally I do audio and video technology, but sometimes I do other kinds of technology. Uh, what do you have there, Max? A carbon monoxide detector. Carbon monoxide detector. OK, let's have a look at this. This has come to the end of its life. Let's see what's inside. And uh, Max, uh, what would this do? What's it for? If there's a faulty boiler, it beeps. Oh, OK. Thank you. So this carbon monoxide detector has a five-year life because it was built in 2015 and it says it needs to be replaced in 2020, which was last year. Let's uh, take a look inside and see what it does. Right, I'll set you up with a better view so we can look down on this. So that's the top cabinet. So sounder is there. You've got three LEDs, power, fault and alarm, and a display. And this clearly is the uh, chemical detector and this failure of this is the reason that the whole unit has to be replaced. Now it would make a lot more sense I think if this could be replaced like a battery could be popped in and if it had a, a chip in it the unit could detect that it's been replaced and that would save replacing the whole unit with all the environmental costs of that. Let's power this up uh, so with three AA cells that was uh, four and a half volts so I've set my power supply to four and a half volts and let's see what it does. Well for the time being it's just sitting there with zero on the display. Reading the temperature of the room so there must be a temperature sensor in here somewhere. It'll be interesting to find that in a moment. And there it says end, so end of life. Looking at the instructions it says here, LCD display, which uh, means liquid crystal display display, error equals fault, triple dashes equals test, HCO equals danger. And there's a test button, test and menu button. So let's press that button. That's test, let's hold it. Oh, it's reading carbon monoxide levels. Well, it says 48 ppm. I think these are the levels that you tolerate for the alarm. I'm not sure. I'd have to read the instructions. I have to say, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing at this moment. It's reading something. Now, I believe it works out that it's end of life from its built-in clock. The crystal down here, if you can just about see, there's a crystal there. That's uh, a normal watch crystal, 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal. So there must be a, a counter and possibly some non-volatile RAM in there to keep a, a count of time. Well, since we can't repair this in any way because we can't replace this and we couldn't reset that counter, let's uh, dismantle it and see what we have. So around the back we have two quite uh, significant ICs in there. I'm surprised there's uh, so much you would have thought that it would have been integrated onto one chip, wouldn't you? Can we make any sense of the markings on these ICs? One is marked Holtec HT1621B. That's that one. The other one appears to have had its markings erased or never printed on it. And looking at the board, this one had the potential to be uh, a larger package. Looking at the top here, it says NTC there, so that would be the negative temperature coefficient sensor. Where is the sensor on the other side of the board? Is it that one? So I think it's this one that says R23. Must be the temperature sensor. We could prove that, couldn't we? So we're reading about 11.6 or so K on that resistor at the moment. Let's see what happens if I warm it gently. The value falls very rapidly. Incredible difference it makes. You might have expected them to use a type K thermocouple, but for whatever reason, uh, I suppose precision is not that important, and this is much easier to assemble and probably cheaper, this uh, negative temperature coefficient resistor. is uh, fitted on the bottom of the board. I quite like that. I'm going to salvage that part, I think. Let's disconnect these wires to give ourselves a bit more room. 
bit of a splashy solder going on there, considering this has never been worked on before. We have a component here marked LB1, which I think is a transformer for producing a higher voltage for the piezoelectric sounder to make it loud. The sounder has three terminals and at least one is connected to that transformer, so uh, that looks likely. We have three very basic LEDs, these are not high brightness ones, but still could be useful for something, so I'll whip those off. They don't want to come off because it's a double-sided PCB. Well, I think we'll uh, take this test button. They can be useful for repairs of remote controls, for example. Being double-sided is making this much harder than it should be. But since we don't care if we damage the board, really, um, I'm going to get the big guns on it. That's got the switch off. It's still quite hot and it needs a little cleaning up. I think we'll take the uh, 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal, but it might be easier to take the display off first. Well, I tried to desolder the display, but it was getting too hot, so I've decided I'll cut it free. Okay, so that's the uh, display and its backlight. It's not impossible that could be used for some project, I don't know what. Let's uh, take off the crystal here now. Looking for any markings on that. Well, very, very faintly engraved on it is 32.768. Let's take off this negative temperature coefficient resistor here. Done that. Let's just confirm that that component survived the uh, ordeal. Yep, around about 11k it's still cooling down. Well, it's a cheap capacitor there. Of course, they didn't need to invest in very long life capacitors since the whole unit's only designed to last five years. So there's nothing really on the top side unless I wanted to keep the sounder. On the underside, well, the ICs aren't going to be any use to us. We have a transistor there, diode. I believe that looks like quite a meaty diode, that. So we have a diode there and it's marked M7. Perhaps that's useful. Decent sized diode. So that's there to guard against reverse battery voltage and it's probably crowbar so that if you get the battery back to front that's designed to short the batteries out I suspect. It won't be in series with the batteries due to the voltage loss that that would incur. So one side's on the negative terminal of the battery. The positive terminal is connected to the other side of the diode. So that will just crowbar the batteries. That's why they've used a big diode and it looks like they have the option for adding another one. Measuring that diode we get 0.6 volts. So that's a good diode. It seems to be a conformal coating over the top of all this which so is making it quite hard to read the component values. But looking here this transistor here is marked Q2 whereas this component here that looks like a transistor is marked U2, so that must be um, more than just a transistor. I won't salvage these transistors, they're not much use to me. So the remaining components, so I say we have the two ICs, whatever this is, that could be a regulator, and some odd assorted uh, passives and transistors, and that's about it, I think. So no other useful components there. I'm not going to bother with this sounder because that's a high voltage sounder. It's not something that would be that easy to drive. So I think that's about it. So what did we take? An extremely small negative temperature coefficient resistor, a small power diode, three LEDs, not very high power ones, a watch crystal, a switch, and well, the LCD for all the use that is. Hope you've enjoyed this brief teardown. I'll get back to doing lots more to do with audio and video technology soon. Bye for now.